Hello, hackers. Welcome to Zero X Hack Day Two. Uh, we are launching off today with uh, Pedro Gomez, founder of Wallet Connect, um, a protocol that uh, many of us use on the on the daily. And um, hi, Pedro. Hi. Nice to be here. Welcome. Good to have you. Uh, so Pedro is going to give us an introduction to Wallet Connect, and he'll tell you more how to use it in your dApps. Uh, so the stage is your. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Uh, I've done this presentation many, many times, but it, it definitely gets easier as people actually get to experience Wallet Connect on the daily basis as they try to interface with applications that use NFTs or decentralized finance. And it has become more and more prominent that dApps do also offer Wallet Connect support for their users. Wallet Connect is an open protocol, which is shared by many wallets. And it allows you to interoperate between dApps across the Ethereum mainnet and also other Ethereum compatible chains like XDAI or Binance Chain, and in the future, other rollups as well. Uh, my name is Pedro Gomez. I'm the founder of Wallet Connect Labs. Uh, we develop the Wallet Connect open source software. And today I would like to talk a bit more of how Wallet Connect works so that you have an understanding about what is actually happening in the background. It's in a few sentences, it's a secure remote signing protocol. It allows you to sign with your wallet in a separate device so that you don't have to have the wallet on the same as the application. And this don't, not only works from mobile to desktop, but it also works between mobile and mobile. That means that if it's in the browser and if it's in the mobile app, it allows you to actually connect one to another. And this makes for a more secure Web3 experience across platforms where you don't have to copy and paste seed phrases. Because most of the time, people want to copy between multiple devices, and that actually is not very secure. And how does it work? When you have a dApp, you actually connect to MetaMask. It has this little connection between the extension and the web page. But because of, sorry, let me. As you can see uh, on the browser, you have this connection with the MetaMask extension, which is present because browser extensions have access to the web page. But when you actually make it to the mobile, you, you need to create this linking or this pairing across different platforms. So Wallet Connect provides that extension. It provides the ability for you to sign across a different platform very securely by providing an end-to-end -end encrypted protocol. It will look very similar to the experience you have in MetaMask, and even MetaMask has both the extension and the mobile. And they give you the exact same interface as if you were going to connect with the pop-up and then when you have the MetaMask mobile that you are able to connect and approve a session. And this happens, uh, if we skip to this part, uh, through the relay infrastructure where both the application and the wallet run these clients that encrypt messages across web sockets, and you're able to relay messages back and forth very easily. But I think the best way to demonstrate is with an example. And there is this very simple example where you can go to example.wallconnect.org that uses Wallconnect. The first thing that you get is a QR code that to be scanned that allows you to pair the device securely. Uh, we can even copy to clipboard like this and actually paste it to get the information on this side. Very easily, you can see that it identifies the application that it's requesting, and you can approve that you actually want to connect to this application. You now have both accounts uh, matching. So you, on the app, you show the same network and the same account. And now you can actually sign some requests. Let's say we want to send a personal sign. It shows here as a pending, and the user is able to approve. This happens through JSON RPC. And once you approve, you actually get the response here. And you are able to control the session from your wallet very easily. Here you have a network, mainnet. And we can switch to a testnet on Robston. And that change reflects on the application. All of this happens through simply having a JSON RPC connection uh, that it's encrypted through the relay that resembles what the MetaMask extension does on the browser. But it can go any platform. We can think between mobile to mobile, mobile to iPad, mobile to desktop, desktop to desktop. It really, there's no boundaries there because 
by using end-to-end -end encrypted communication, you have the same capabilities of a cloud infrastructure, but without the compromise of any privacy concerns. And you can see that it's even able to disconnect from both sides. So the experience can be designed that either the user has control from the app or the wallet, and it's able to cut off the session right away. Uh, so what is Wallet Connect 2.0? Uh, well, Connect 2.0 is basically going to introduce multi-chain support. Nowadays, we support only Ethereum, but we're going to support Cosmos, Polkadot, and we're going to have many other chains also being supported. Well, Connect 2.0 works just like as Well, Connect 1, but introduces a bunch of capabilities that improve the user experience overall and also improve the blockchain support. Uh, this is a little bit more technical about if you want to actually participate in the development of Wallet Connect, you can uh, actually read more about the differences between the version one and version two. Version one is currently in production in over 200 applications. Version two is in beta development, which we hope to release within the next six months to all wallets and applications. And we developed a bunch of standards in terms of cross-chain applications. Uh, which we define as CAIPs, which if you're interested more on that. But most importantly, I think that the developers should look into the documentation and our libraries to actually start playing with it. So if we go to doc documentations or docs.wallconnect.org, you can simply click on quick start, select what you want to use, uh, for example, for dApps, and the most recommended one would definitely be the web tree provider for you to use with your web tree JS and Ether JS. Uh, you're able to just pass in an Infura ID to connect to the blockchain and you enable the provider. And then you have all toggles between web tree and Ether JS that you want to use. Most importantly, you should listen to EIP 1193. Uh, because as you saw in the example, in order to reflect those changes when the accounts change or when the chain changes, there are these event listeners. And also, there is a disconnect event for when the wallet closes the connection. And after that, you'll be able to use all the methods that you've used, which gets accounts, chain IDs, networks, and transactions, and et cetera. Uh, I'll leave some time for questions now. See, uh, we've, we've had this example here for the web tree provider, uh, which I believe most users, uh, most developers would be using this because it's the easiest experience for Wallet Connect. You are able to use your favorite library like web tree JS or Ether JS with Wallet Connect, and it will handle the QR code. It will handle everything, even including mobile linking, which uh, has its own properties that are described here in the documentation for DAP developers. It is a quite easy experience because once you install the web tree provider from NPM, you can build your DAP without having to worry how Wallet Connect works. The only thing that I would definitely recommend uh, reading about is how to handle smart contract wallets like Gnosis Safe and Argent, where you actually have to take in some considerations about how to verify messages. Because in the usual sense, you have a private key and a public key pair representing an account, but for smart contract wallets, you have a smart contract, which means that when you recover a message that it's signed, you have to take into account the EIP 1271, which is a standard to how to validate signatures for smart contract wallets. You sign a message with a delegate key that owns that contract, and then you use that signature by calling the is valid signature method which you can use the Ether.js by hashing it and providing it as an if call. And even for transactions, there is the concept of a relay where the relay will process the transaction for the user. And you might have to see if the transaction actually comes from a different sender rather than the one you actually seen it sign. It's a matter of taking these nuances between smart contract wallets and normal wallets that will make a significant better experience because some users would want to use a smart contract wallet for the social recovery uh, uh, properties that they have. And this is something that DAP developers have to take into account. But most of the, the features are already 
abstracted by the Web3 provider, where you simply need an Ethereum ID and you inject it in your EtherJS or Web2JS, and it, you just need to listen to these events to update your UI. You can already find in registry.wallconnect.org all the wallets that support Wallet Connect uh, and also the dApps. Uh, you can select here to only show the apps. There's hundreds of apps, and there's over 60 wallets uh, supporting Wallet Connect today. So it's a very, very, very diverse ecosystem, and it's growing every day. And it allows for a much better user experience overall, because we are not relying on a single wallet or on a single app to provide the experience that the users need to manage their private keys. If anyone has any questions, please do put in the chat. If no more questions, uh, definitely visit us on GitHub, on Discord, uh, and documentations, and definitely participate. Because the more people that participate in open source, the better we can have feedback and contributions from all over the world. Thank you. Also, a small note, uh, if any of you are looking to get into crypto and you would like to participate more than just open source and would like to potentially look for a part-time or a full-time position, uh, Wallet Connect will start hiring and we would like to know about your set of skills, what you would like to participate, what would you like to actually build on Wallet Connect and make this ecosystem even better for developers, especially if you're interested in the DevOps or backend, because we want to make sure that our infrastructure for relaying messages is the most performant and most reliable that makes the user experience seamless no matter where they connect their wallet. Cool. If there is any other questions, uh, I hope this presentation kind of encompass all the details that you would like to know about how Wallet Connect works today and where do we want to go in the future with Wallet Connect 2.0. And if you would like to dive in more, feel free to reach me on Twitter at Pedro UID or on GitHub. And we're always available on Discord as well. So I'm always open to new questions and you can find me everywhere with this handle. Thanks for having me.